it's not like any other podcast. Coming to you straight from the heartland, where investing is told like it is. It's time for Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hold on, because here comes the next episode of the Paranoid Banker Podcast. Hey there, for those of you that will not be able to attend this month's Property Discovery Day, uh, we will be having another. Uh, We are already looking for future dates based on demand for the Property Discovery Day and based on the amount of investors that were unable to attend here in March. So if you want to be on the priority list and make sure that you do get first notice and first immediate access to our next Investor Discovery Day, just simply send me an email. Reply to my email at Darren at HeartlandInvestmentPartners.com. Let me know your name, uh, and we will make sure that my staff gets you on our priority list so we can be sure you will have first access and not be left out on our next property discovery day. Just just simply send us an email, Darren at HeartlandInvestmentPartners.com, and we will be happy to make sure you are on our next Investor Discovery day list. More to come on that with dates and times, but if you want to make sure you're on that list, let us know and we will get you on the priority list. Hey there, Darren Garman here. I want to welcome you to this week's podcast. We have uh, some interesting subject matter to cover today, and it's really about becoming a luckier investor. And uh, as I'm recording this, and it's actually on St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Uh, whenever you are listening to this podcast, um, no matter what time of year, by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day to you, whether you're listening it, listening to me on St. Patrick's Day or some other day or time, um, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. So let's talk about luck, because that's really what St. Patrick's Day is all about. Um, I mean, there's lots of people that think it's about many other things. Things, <laughs> um, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, if you are celebrating, or if you did celebrate, or know of people that celebrated, they've got some green on. In many cases, you're going to see the uh, the clover three leaf or four leaf, typically, and there's some meanings behind that uh, that we could get into. But I want to talk about luck and uh, and how you can become a luckier investor. Since that's the um, that's the theme right now is luck with St. Patrick's Day, and there there is such a thing as luck. Uh, it is out there. Um, I believe that you can get lucky and uh, and attract more of it, but but there are things you can do to attract more of it. And as an investor, we're going to talk about what some of those things are, specifically as it relates to an apartment property owner or investor, uh, or a partner, as is the case with uh, many of you listening to this right now. Uh, many of you are a partner uh, in a apartment property or apartment properties, maybe you're a passive investor. Uh, some of you may own your own apartments right now or other commercial property. Uh, I just came from a two-day event called the Multifamily Boardroom, where there were over 40 of us, um, and I think I'm I'm doing justice by saying we had 40 heavy hitters there that are in the multifamily investment business, in the passive investment business, uh, day-to-day, nose-to-nose, toes-to-toes with it. This is what they do every day. And they're from all over the country doing, uh, doing this. And uh, so from learning and hearing from what many of these other heavy hitters are doing or what they're up to, uh, I think can really help uh, what we're going to talk about today. Because a lot of what I heard and talked to them about was about this. And, um, and so let's go ahead and let's talk about that. Uh, the thing that you want to... Be thinking about to become a luckier investor, especially in apartment communities, is well. Let me give you an example. So I had 
a opportunity, an apartment investment opportunity crossed my desk last week. And it was, um, everything made sense. So in a nutshell, the city that this property was in was good. The property sounded fine. Um, the financials sounded good. So in a nutshell, everything sounded good. And I would imagine you would feel the same way too if you got the information that I did. So the information was delivered to me uh, via email. Um, sounded good. Returns good. Um, at the end of the day, it sounded like an investment that probably most of us would be interested in being involved in, okay? Uh, but I immediately, immediately chose not to get involved in it, okay? Immediately, despite all of the great things I was hearing. Um, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why I could cite that I decided right away not to get involved in it. But I'll give you the number one reason I chose not to. And it was because I didn't know who the person was that was working on and um, really soliciting investors for this opportunity. I didn't know who this gentleman was at all. Okay. Um, so if I don't know you, I'm not going to invest with you. And when I say know you, I'm not saying that I need to, you know, be your best friend for a few years before I decide to move ahead with something. But if I don't really know who you are, what you're about, where you live, what you've got going on in your life, um, what you're up to, uh, what, you know, all of those things, I'm not going to be involved with you because I don't know you. And so... You want to be lucky in your apartment investing. You want to get involved in investing with someone that you know. You know about them. You know what they're up to. You know what they're dealing with day to day. You get information from them. You get educational information from them. You get an idea of what they're doing pretty much every day. Okay. Um, and it's important that you know that. You want to know what's going on. I would tell you, if you want to be unlucky, get involved with someone that you have no idea who they are or what they're up to, and you go by just what you see or hear in front of you on a computer screen or in an email. That's not the right way to go. And I don't care what kind of return people are talking about, because I will argue, too, that if you want to be unlucky or you want to be luckier, I don't care how you put it, you don't just chase a rate of return. There are other intangibles you need to be aware of and not just base your decision on what is my rate of return. Yeah, rate of return is pretty damn important, sure. But there are a hell of a lot of other things you need to be thinking about, you want to know about, you want to feel comfortable with before you get on or involved in any kind of investment with people, company, corporations, whatever. Right? So back to knowing the person. Um, I will get involved in an investment with somebody as long as I know them. They've communicated with me. We've had some dialogue. I can kind of see in the background what they're up to, what they're doing, what they're dealing with by the way they communicate with me and by what I find out through that communication. Whether it's email, whether it's over the phone, uh, I want to know what this person has going on. So there is a reason why people get multiple emails from me a day. I take multiple calls during the week. I respond personally to multiple emails during the week and even on the weekends too. There's a reason why I do that. And that's because people want to get to know who I am. They want to know what I'm up to. Heck, many people want to get an idea what I got going on over the weekend, right? What'd you do with Gina this weekend and the kids? What happened? What's going on? Um, people want to know. Now, they don't send me an email saying, hey, what did you and Gina do today? <laughs> I don't get that. But don't you think that by having that kind of relationship, people that invest then get luckier with the kind of results they get with their investment? 
when they know somebody and they're more comfortable knowing and have that relationship and can understand what to expect now versus not having that, right? And so, you know, you can look at this conventional market. So conventional markets, so if you invest in a mutual fund somewhere um, or stock somewhere and you use an online platform to do it, I'm not criticizing you. I'm just saying you don't have a relationship with anybody. Maybe you even have robots taking care of your stuff. I don't know. Um, but that's an unlucky way to go. You want a relationship with someone that's got your back, can look out for your best interests, knows what you're up to, knows what you've got going on. So here's what I can tell you. Um, every one of my 200 and plus partners, I know them. They know me. Now, I don't know every single detail about what every one of them has going on, but I can tell you what they do, where they work, what they've got going on, and what's important to them. Pretty much. Okay? And that's the kind of person you want to work with if you want success in the multifamily apartment community ownership investment. Especially if you're going to be a passive investor. Okay? Um, so there's that. You, you, you want to be lucky. You want to get to know the person you're dealing with to be as lucky as possible. Okay. That's, that's number one. Um, number two, and we talked about it a little bit, but what do you see happening in the future and how can you position yourself to take advantage of those situations, trends, economically, politically that you see going on right now. And it is a little bit of looking into the crystal ball, right? But do you really want to have your money in the most volatile place it can be right now? Especially knowing that we have an election coming up pretty soon, right? Especially knowing the political tensions we have with countries such as China with our trade, such as Russia right now, okay? And other countries, I mean, do you want to have your money exposed in areas that could take sharp declines because of what's going on in the economic and political market, especially globally? Because as a nation, we are very dependent on how well things go globally, right? I mean, our currency is like the currency of the world still, even though you can make arguments that, you know, China's made a lot of headway there and all that. Um, it still is. So we really need things to go well for people. And if they don't, we are affected by it. You're affected by it. If your money is in an area or a market or an area that can be wiped out, can be um, taken a huge decline or a huge hit because of what is happening that you have no control over. So you want to be luckier? Have your money in places that is are not affected by that, or at least have some of your wealth, your capital, in those places. Okay? Because if, you know, there's a lot of talk, and I had a, a, a podcast on this not too long ago. There's a lot of talk about, you know, the next recession, you know, the next big uh, correction coming, all of that. I mean, there's a lot of talk about that. As we get closer to 2020, as we've talked, you're going to hear more about it. Well, if that's going to be the case, let's just say that is going to happen. <laughs> and I'm not saying it is, by the way. I'm saying a lot of supposed experts think this is coming. You would have no one but yourself to blame if you took a significant loss to your income or net worth by having your money in places that could be dramatically affected by that, especially quickly. Would you not agree? So you want to become luckier? Be strategic with where your money is right now. Especially as it relates to trends for multifamily ownership, investing, and especially when it comes to demand from tenants over the next five to eight years. Um, I can tell you one thing. If you are counting on the single family home market to buoy your investing results. 
um, you're really exposing yourself. Now, it sounds kind of strange coming from a real estate guy, doesn't it? Right? I mean, I'm a real estate guy. I want all real estate to do well. But if you're like one of these single family home investors, or you think that's where you, you should be putting your money, um, the single family home trends from a demand standpoint, and I'm talking buyers, is going to be pretty interesting. Now, you've got one school of thought of, we're going to buy as many single family homes as we can, because at some point in time, this is going to change and the buyers are going to come out of the walls and we're going to sell them. I mean, maybe. But as economic and political things continue to be more and more unpredictable, you want to have your money in places that have more predictability than others. That's how you become lucky. Okay. And by the way, even the experts make mistakes with all of this. Um, and nobody's perfect. So if you you just go ahead and you ask Warren Buffett what he thinks about the problems they're having with the Campbell's Soup Company and what's going on there. I mean, that company has taken a huge huge markdown huge and that's one of buffett that's one of berkshire's big investments by the way billions of dollars so um you there's no science to this but it really comes down to positioning yourself and your money with some strategic thought of where can you take advantage of trends and where can you move your money to be out of the way of unlucky events happening to you now, what I've just disclosed here, I guess disclose is the wrong word. What I've just mentioned here is something that's, um, I mean, it, there's no big formulas. There's no crazy spreadsheets to follow. There's no um, courses or books to buy to kind of follow this. Because we all kind of know what we really should be doing. It's just a matter of doing it. And when it comes to apartment property and apartment community ownership, uh, I really think this is where uh, you can be the luckiest to take advantage of the trends by be taking advantage of those trends and by also moving some of your capital away from areas that have more of a propensity of being unlucky, especially over the next few years, right? So do your research, please. Check things out. What did I say early on? Get to know who you're going to be involved with investing-wise. Know them, understand them, get to know them better, talk to them, ask them questions, um, and have a relationship with them. It's important, and it gets you luckier if you do. But then also, where is your money at in terms of trends? Is it in a place that ha could have a propensity of having some unlucky things happening, or in a place that could have some lucky things happening, right? Pretty easy questions, um, easier to think about, easier to strategize about, harder to implement. But what I think is necessary implementation. Okay, so have a great day today. Have a great rest of your week. Hopefully this gives you something to think about. Hopefully you've taken a few notes either on your computer, on paper, or mentally. And you're going to work towards being luckier over the next few years. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. See you. Bye-bye. Hey there. For those of you that will not be able to attend this month's Property Discovery Day, uh, we will be having another. Uh, we are already looking for future dates based on demand for the Property Discovery Day and based on the amount of investors that were unable to attend here in March. So if you want to be on the priority list and make sure that you do get first notice and first immediate access to our next Investor Discovery Day, just simply send me an email. Reply to my email at darren at heartlandinvestmentpartners.com. Let me know your name, 
Uh, and we will make sure that my staff gets you on our priority list so we can be sure you will have first access and not be left out on our next property discovery day. Just, just simply send us an email, Darren at heartlandinvestmentpartners.com, and we will be happy to make sure you are on our next investor discovery day list. More to come on that with dates and times, but if you want to make sure you're on that list, let us know and we will get you on the priority list. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com. Thanks for joining Darren Garman's Paranoid Banker Podcast. For investment questions, comments, or to get in touch with Darren, go to www.garmanblog.com.